In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your that is the greeting of the risen Lord, who stands in our midst at work for the soul of our beloved Cardinal Francis George. We pray for his eternal redemption, the reward of eternal life. And yet we also are aware of our own need for God's healing power in our lives that comes in the forgiveness of sins. Let us call to mind our sins and failings and call on God's mercy. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us all of our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, who chose your servant, Cardinal George, from among your priests and endowed him with pontifical dignity, in the apostolic priesthood. Grant, we pray, that he may also be admitted to their company forever through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Czytanie z Księgi Apokalipsy świętego Jana Apostoła. Ja, Jan, ujrzałem nowe niebo i ziemię nową, bo pierwsze niebo i pierwsza ziemia przeminęły i morza już nie ma. I miasto święte, nowe Jeruzalem, ujrzałem stępujące z nieba od Boga, przystrojone jak oblubienica, zdobna w klejnoty dla swojego męża. I usłyszałem donośny głos mówiący od tronu. Oto przybytek z Boga z ludźmi i zamieszka wraz z nimi i będą oni jego ludem, a on będzie Bogiem z nimi. I otrze z ich oczu wszelką łzę, a śmierci już odtąd nie będzie. Ani żałoby, ani krzyku, ani trudu już odtąd nie będzie, bo pierwsze rzeczy przeminęły. I rzekł zasiadający na tronie, Oto czynię wszystko nowe. I rzekł mi, stało się. Jam alfa i omega, początek i koniec. Ja pragnącemu dam darmo pić ze źródła wody życia. 
Zwycięzca to odziedziczy i będę Bogiem dla Niego, a On dla mnie będzie Synem. Oto Słowo Boże. to 
Lectura de la Carta del Apóstol San Pablo a los Romanos Hermanas y hermanos, si Dios está a nuestro favor, ¿quién estará en contra nuestra? El que no nos escatimó a su propio Hijo, sino que lo entregó por todos nosotros. ¿Cómo no va a estar dispuesto a darnoslo todo, junto con su Hijo? ¿Quién acusará a los elegidos de Dios, si Dios mismo es quien los perdona? ¿Quién será el que los condene? ¿Acaso Jesucristo, que murió, resucitó y está a la derecha de Dios para interceder por nosotros? ¿Qué cosa podrá apartarnos del amor con que nos ama Cristo? ¿Las tribulaciones? ¿Las angustias? ¿La persecución? ¿El hambre? ¿La desnudez? ¿El peligro? ¿La espada? Ciertamente, de todo esto salimos más que victoriosos, gracias a aquel que nos ha amado. Pues estoy convencido de que ni la muerte, ni la vida, ni los ángeles, ni los demonios, ni el presente, ni el futuro, ni los poderes de este mundo, ni lo alto, ni lo bajo, ni criatura alguna podrá apartarnos del amor que nos ha manifestado Dios en Cristo Jesús. Palabra de Dios. From the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus raised his eyes to heaven and said, Father, those whom you gave me are your gift to me. I wish that where I am, they also may be with me, that they may see my glory that you gave me, because you loved me before the foundation of the world. Righteous Father, the world also does not know you, but I know you, and they know that you sent me. I made known to them your name, and I will make it known that the love with which you loved me may be in them and I in them. The Gospel of the Lord.
As a pastor in Memphis 20-something years ago, one day I picked up a national Catholic publication and read the text of a talk by a Bishop Francis George of Yakima, Washington. I cannot recall the topic, but I do recall my reaction. I said to myself, here is a clear voice, a voice I need to listen to, a pastor who helped me understand the faith better and taught me how to teach it. From that point on, whenever I noticed Bishop George and his name associated with a talk or an article, I read it, and I was never disappointed. Years later, a bishop myself, I heard that voice speak in person, and I found the same clarity, the same creativity, the same natural interplay between faith and reason, the same challenge to discipleship that I had perceived in his written word. And I noticed something else. Cardinal George spoke not only from prepared texts, but also frequently off the cuff, spontaneously from the heart, in an understated, almost under his breath kind of way. And I learned that such afterthoughts were just as insightful as the written text. They welled up from within him, unrehearsed, and they gave a glimpse of the fullness that was his interior life. In a certain sense, he couldn't not put these afterthoughts to words. Although perhaps I think he wished from time to time that he had not. <laughs> they were so much a part of him, from the tips of his toes to the top of his head. They literally rolled off his lips because, as the Lord had said, from the fullness of the heart, the mouth speaks. I always listen to his afterthoughts, and a personally memorable case in point happened right here in this pulpit seven or eight years ago. I had celebrated Mass with him for the young adults of our two dioceses, during which I had preached a quite forgettable homily. <laughs> After Holy Communion, the Cardinal walked up to this pulpit and offered some unforgettable, off-the-cuff, closing remarks. And one echoes within me to this day. The only thing we take with us when we die is what we have given away. I pondered those words for a long time. And over the last few weeks, as he neared death, I became aware of many similar remarks that he had made in various circumstances over the years. He was fond of reminding us that our relationships with the Lord and with each other are all that endure. Everything else goes to the grave. In fact, he concludes the foreword of an upcoming book, A Godly Humanism, clarifying the hope that lies within, with these familiar thoughts. Pope Francis, he writes, often contrasts our planning with God's providence. God is a God of surprises. Pope Francis explains, and the final horizon is God's infinite love. It can never completely be responded to. But as the years here go shorter, it fills in with the realization that just as we pray to see God face to face, so God wants to see us face to face. We give him our time, which is all that we have. And he takes the gift and calls us when he is ready to do so. The only thing we take with us when we die is what we have given away. The only things that endure 
are our relationships with God and with each other. We give him all that we have, and he takes the gift and calls us when he is ready to do so. Spontaneously, from the fullness of his heart, Cardinal George gave to the Lord and to us, and both his written words and his unedited afterthoughts brought to light a profound interior life motivated by hope, hope in the Lord. Doesn't it make sense that an oblate of Mary Immaculate would ever strive to make an oblation, an offering, a gift, a sacrifice of his life, and that this oblation would be deeply grounded within, grounded in hope in the one by whose sacrifice alone we are saved. Yes, it makes perfect sense. But what did Cardinal George offer to God and through God to us? What did he give away? He offered a life joined to the cross of Christ. When the polio virus attacked him at age 13, he learned early and quickly that suffering is not hypothetical but real, that pain is palpable and can have lasting implications. Only the Lord knows the stuff of the conversations that the two of them had through the years about that dreaded disease and the one that it would eventually take his life. But there's no doubt these were spirited conversations. For the crosses of Francis George transformed him exteriorly and interiorly into a man of compassion for all who suffered, no matter the cause. It was with the Lord's own love poured out on the cross that he loved us. The book of Genesis recounts that night when Jacob wrestled with the angel of God until dawn, when the match left him limping after the angel struck and dislocated his hip. Jacob realized that something divine had taken place, and he said, I have seen God face to face. Francis George's own wrestling in a body struck by polio gave him lasting insight into the mystery of the cross through a wound that was somehow not just his, but also Christ's. He offered a life of faith, conviction, and courage. In the end, as he would say, all of us need a rock foundation. Otherwise, as the Lord said, When the rains and winds come and buffet the house, it cannot stand. With heart and soul and both legs firmly planted in that truth, Francis George lived a life grounded in the conviction, quite simply, that God is everything. When one is convinced, deeply committed to a truth, then that truth becomes the guide and arbiter of every aspect of his life. The cardinal's faith was simple, direct, without pretense or embarrassment, spontaneous, bold, profound, and even childlike. He was so utterly a Christian, so utterly a priest, that no circumstance or setting would have seemed to him inappropriate to give witness to Christ. He was convinced, as St. Paul was, that God is for us in such a complete and incomprehensible way that nothing, nothing at all, will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Thus convinced, How could he not give witness to Christ everywhere, from this pulpit to the public square? 
He offered a life devoted to prayer. If God is everything, then prayer becomes one's lifeline. Prayer in solitude, unseen, at odd hours and at every hour. Prayer in common with brother bishops and priests and deacons and religious and the faithful across the archdiocese. Prayer with those who have been harmed by the church. Christ's own prayer in the sacraments, especially in the Holy Eucharist and the sacrament of penance. For Cardinal George, prayer was the integrating factor of the Christian life through which his relationship with God was nourished, sustained, and bore fruit in love. It was this relationship with God that also fueled his intellectual pursuit of the truth. Make no mistake, the homilies he preached, the classes he taught, the pastoral care he gave, flowed gently and compellingly from a life devoted to prayer. That is to say, all these things flowed from God through the friend and minister of God, Francis George, to us. He offered a brilliant mind in love with God. No one could ever dispute the extraordinary intellectual gifts God gave Francis George, nor could one ever dispute the enthusiasm with which he put these gifts to use for the good of the church and for the world. I often consoled myself with the fact that even though I could never have written the books he wrote, nor prepared the talks that he prepared, I could understand them. <laughs> and even my understanding was the result of the gift God gave him to communicate clearly the truths of the faith. You see, when a mind is in love with God, then the pursuit of truth flows effortlessly along the vital relationship between faith and reason. When the pursuit of truth is fueled by a life of prayer, it's undertaken in, communi in communion with Christ, who is the wisdom of God. And when one is joined to Christ, the Savior of the world, then the beauty and the mystery of the world become the object of one's love. For whom and what Christ loves, the mind given to Christ loves. He offered a vision of the new Jerusalem. As an oblate, Francis George yearned for a life of mission, yearned to be sent wherever and to whomever the Lord would have him go. With an acute sense of God's infinite love for the human person and for humanity as a whole, he saw in human culture the traces of God's handiwork and thus a doorway to God himself. The connection between faith and culture would fascinate him his entire life. Enlightened by prayer and love, impelled by the Christian vocation to evangelize, made bold and strong by the fire of the Holy Spirit, it took him literally around the world. In the vision of a new Jerusalem, where God is all in all, Francis George saw the church as a living witness in every human circumstance, whether frustratingly mundane or bewilderingly tragic. For where human life is found, there Christ desires to dwell in his church. Loving, healing, teaching, listening, feeding, leading, accompanying, giving to drink from a well that will never go dry. And since the earth is also God's creation, 
And since we humans, that crown of that creation, cannot save ourselves, Christ makes all things new through the church, the new Jerusalem. A couple of Easter Sundays ago, Cardinal George preached these words. We see only the results of faith and hope and love, but we live in our deepest reality when we are in their grasp. Saints Mary Magdalene, Peter, and John, when they were coming to believe but still not fully understanding, ran to the place where they learned to believe, to the person in whom they placed their hope, to the beloved Lord who shows us that revealed truth and self-sacrificing love are more real, more trustworthy than anything else. If the earth is our mother, then the grave is our home, and the world is a closed system turned in on itself. But if Christ is risen from the grave and the church is our mother, then our destiny reaches beyond space and time and beyond what can be measured and controlled. And therein lies our hope. From his heart's abundance flowed not only his words, but also his very life's oblation. He offered a life joined to the cross of Christ, a life of faith, hope, conviction, and courage, a soul devoted to prayer, a brilliant mind in love with God, a vision of the new Jerusalem. And because he gave these things and more away, he took them with him to meet the Lord last week. As you know, he was uncomfortable with questions about his legacy because these were questions about himself. He responded to them by suggesting that you and I are his legacy because everything he gave us was not his at all, but the living truth of Christ, the way, the truth, the life. St. Augustine once preached in a kind of prose that is very reminiscent of the Cardinal's own style, this simple lesson. Such is the topic as I have presented it for our inquiry and discussion. If I lack either the time or the ability to study the implications of so profound a mystery, he who speaks within you, even when I am not here, will teach you better. It is he whom you contemplate with devotion, he whom you have welcomed into your hearts, he whose temples you have become. What Francis George had received, he handed on to us. So has it ever been in the church, and so shall it ever be. Now, through you and me. Brothers and sisters, let us stand and offer our prayers. Jesus Christ is risen from the dead and sits at the right hand of the Father where he intercedes for his church, confident that God hears the voices of those who trust in the Lord Jesus. We join our prayers to his. Cardinal Frank.
Francis George, who in baptism was given the pledge of eternal life, that he may now be admitted to the company of the saints. We pray to thy Lord. todas las naciones y los gobiernos, para que la paz de Dios sea extendida por toda la tierra. We pray to thy Lord. Módlmy się za chorych y cierpiących oraz za wszystkich, o których pamiętamy. We pray to the Lord. ang Dios ay maaaring magtatag kay Cardinal Francis George ng liwanag at kapayapaan. We pray to the Lord. that God may give a place in the heavenly kingdom to all the faithful departed. We pray to the Giver of peace, healer of souls, hear the prayers of the Redeemer Jesus Christ and the voices of your people whose lives were purchased by the blood of the Lamb, through Christ our Lord.
pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the sacrificial gifts we offer for the soul of your servant, Cardinal Francis George, that as you accorded him the pontifical dignity in this world, so you may command him to be admitted to the company of your saints in the heavenly kingdom, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he is the salvation of the world, the life of the human race, the resurrection of the dead. Through him the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you, firstly, for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world. Together, with your servant Francis, our Pope, me, your unworthy servant, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants, and all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them, we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, and to you, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon and Jude, 
Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sistus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmas and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things we may defend it by your protecting help. Therefore, O Lord, we pray graciously accept this oblation of our service. That of your whole family, order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is a chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins, do this in memory of me. The mystery of fate. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious and majesty for the gifts you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and serene countenance and to accept them as you once you accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your angel to your altar in high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through the participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servant, Francis Eugene George, and all who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace, Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in the fellowship with your apostles and with the martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, P. 
Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord. Through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, and sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him, with him, in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Thank you, Sponsor, for being here. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
Amen.
blood of Christ.
Let us pray. We pray, almighty and merciful God, that as you have made your servant, Cardinal George, an ambassador for Christ on earth, so you may raise him, purified by this sacrifice, to be seated with Christ in heaven, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. As we approach the final farewell and commendation, I want to express once again on behalf of all of us our deepest condolences to you, Margaret, and the entire family of Cardinal George. Thank you for the influence you have had on his life and the support that you have given him over the years. Those were gifts that enhanced his ministry and, as a result, graced our lives. You are no doubt consoled by the very moving homily of our good friend, Archbishop Peter Sartain. Thank you, Archbishop, for your words today. and the thousands of people who have come over these past three days, people of different faith traditions and ages, people of different ethnicities, walks of life, came to support you, Margaret and the family, and all of us as they mourned and honored a great leader, sharing stories, prayer, and song. Among those joining us today, whom we want to honor and thank are the many bishops and cardinals, as well as the representative of Pope Francis, Archbishop Vigano. You all have very demanding schedules, particularly in this time of the year. We're very grateful that you came to be with us. And Archbishop Vigano, please let the Holy Father know of our deep gratitude for the wonderful, touching message that he sent to offer his sympathy and his apostolic blessing. His ministry is already a singular blessing, and he is ever close to us in prayer as we thank God for many gifts. We have been assisted greatly in these days by the media, who worked long hours, allowing a much larger audience to share these days with us. So too we are thankful to the governor, Governor Rauner, thank you for being here with us today, all our elected officials. The civic community here in Chicago has been generously available to us, the first responders, those who provide security. Thanks to all of you, and especially to you, Mayor Rahm Emanuel. All of you could not have been more gracious and attentive to us in this time of loss. And my final words of thanks go to the committee who worked some very long hours to prepare for these days, our archdiocesan and cathedral teams led by our Vicar General Father Ron Hicks were just outstanding in their dedication, their attention to detail. All of you involved in the planning and the execution of our various services and liturgies, the gatherings, gave us all the freedom to grieve and comfort one another, a gift that all of us genuinely appreciates. And you make us proud. You make me proud. Thanks to all of you. Now, Father Hicks has some final instructions before Archbishop Roger Schweitz, who is an oblate of Mary Immaculate, like our beloved Cardinal, offers the final commendation. And thank you to Archbishop Supic for your, all of your very kind words and for your leadership and guidance. Just a quick announcement for those who are going to be going to the cemetery. 
There is a couple of options. You're welcome to join us at the cemetery. Two options. You could either go by driving your own car directly to the cemetery or by taking one of the buses that is available outside of the cathedral. If you're driving, the instructions to the cemetery are available from one of the ushers. The yellow instruction card will also serve as your pass to enter the east side of the cemetery. If you choose to take one of the buses, the buses will return to the cathedral upon completion of the uh, internment service at the cemetery. And then finally, for those who will be traveling to the airport immediately after this service, just a friendly piece of advice, please consider leaving as soon as possible. because traffic will be congested, especially in this area and also on the expressway, as the funeral procession will be using the expressway. Thank you. Before we go our separate ways, let us take leave of our brother Francis. May our farewell express our affection for him. May it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. One day, we shall joyfully greet him again when the love of Christ, which conquers all things, destroys even death itself. To your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our brother Francis in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, he will raise him with him on the last day. We give thanks for the blessings which you bestowed upon Cardinal George in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, Turn toward us and listen to our prayer. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us who remain to comfort one another with the assurances of faith until we meet in Christ 
and are with you and with our brother forever. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us go forth, taking our brother to his final resting place. 